Mi nombre es María Manuel. My name is Maria Manuel. I came to America from Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico, with my kids, Juliana and Marcos, in 2000. Here, I met my husband, and we have two more children. Juliana once told me she would get married and surround me with a lot of grandkids so I wouldn't feel alone in the United States. The last time I saw my Juliana was on Father's Day last year. A few days later, I was on the phone with her. Later that night, I missed phone calls from many people trying to get a hold of me, but I had already gone to bed. The next morning, Juliana's oldest daughter called and said her family had not arrived home the night before. From what we know from officials, it appears that the train was heading in this direction, heading westbound, the minivan heading northbound across the tracks. Police say upon impact, that vehicle was pushed about 200 yards no from where ser. the impact happened. Six people Entonces, were in the three of them died. Juliana, her husband, and their daughter, Evelyn, were killed. My grandsons, Edgar, Pedro, and Julian were in critical condition. So in the beginning, he was really, really sleepy. So we even had to think about different medications and do things like that to make sure he was alert enough to participate in therapy. We know with traumatic brain injury, we usually give people an estimate of about six months and that where you are at six months is often how you stay for the long term. Kind of from the beginning, he, when we first started working together, he really had very limited use of both of his arms, um, especially one side was really, really tight, and we spent a lot of time just trying to stretch it, just trying to get it to be able to even be loose, and the other side was very, very uncoordinated. It was like we couldn't even reach for something that was in front of us. And now not only can we hold a ball, but we're learning how to throw it. Edgar is a champ, even though a lot of times people think of speech as just talking and language, we also work on feeding. Um, so help to make sure that his swallow is safe and that he can eat all different textures and drink anything that he wants. So that's been a big improvement. And then another big improvement from the speech side is just being able to answer questions, to be able to tell things that he needs. You got a match. Dang. So for now, the sky is the limit for Edgar. So there's literally no limit on what he's going to be able to do. He's always fighting through everything he does, even though there are times where he does feel like he's getting tired and he doesn't want to continue, but he still pushes himself to be better and, you know, he does it for everyone and for himself as well. In thinking about who has participated in Edgar's recovery, it's the entire hospital. <laughs> we had the hospital medicine team, we had the physical medicine and rehabilitation team and Dr. Dion, we have all the nurses and case managers and physical therapists. Hey, <laughs> and over this past year that we've been working with him, we've gone from from that level to, I mean, this absolutely excited, happy, talking our ears off, running around everywhere, and just being like a very excited and very engaged guy. I think that from a therapy perspective, like we have definitely helped and taught strategies. However, I feel like his progress comes from everything that they have done at home, whether that's working on eating different foods with him and making sure that he's safe or t going on walks together as a whole family. Even in his household, he has a lot of little siblings, although they're helping him a lot and, help, and we're huge in helping him relearn how to eat 
how to walk around the house, how to get out of bed. He's kind of reversing that role now. I feel like we have this beautiful space and this beautiful like, amount of people that are in this hospital to kind of create such a healing recovery from some of the most challenging and scary and difficult times that people go through. And it's a really unique place to be able to hold and help children and their families through that. La Rabita has helped our family a lot. Um, they have kept us together. When we wanted to see Edgar, uh, they allowed it uh, so we could be able to see him. And they pushed our siblings like such a far away and they gave them the strengths. And every time we go, we're always treated with a smile. With we, We're never left behind or feel excluded. We're always being treated equally and with a smile and just like, you know, like a family. Blanca y preciosa, llena de amor. I hope that people will give to La Rabira. It's something everyone can do. How do I explain it? It's very important that people donate because there are kids who need that service that need that therapy and need the help that La Rabira is giving Edgar and our whole family. Most important is the love they give because every kid needs that love.